Good evening, everybody. My name is Tim Cunningham. I'm one of the Year 12 level leaders at St. Bernard's College. Welcome to our GAT uh, information evening. Um, tonight you'll hear from our VCE coordinator, Ms. Bernadette Kirkwood, who will run you through some key information about our GAT, uh, the role, the purpose, and some of the logistics on the day. We have a QA and a session uh, on the, at the top of your screen. You should see a QA and a function at the top. If you've got any questions along the way, we'll endeavor our best to answer those questions as best we can. And we're also making a recording of the program, so if you need to review any kind of uh, information that's presented, you'll be able to do so at a later stage. As always, we'll start with prayer and acknowledgement of country. So we acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners and custodians on the country in which we gather. We pray our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. In a spirit of humility and reconciliation, we commit ourselves again to the listening to the ancient wisdom that resides in the dreaming of Australia's First Nations peoples so that we may learn to live in harmony with one another and with the earth in our common home. And our prayer, this is a prayer that we shared with our students for this presentation last week. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity to learn new skills and stretch my understanding. Thank you for guiding me through this time of study and into the final exams. I lay before you all the hopes and fears I have about the outcome. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us. And of Jesus in our hearts forever. Amen. Holy Spirit. And I'll pass over to uh, Bernard Kirkwood, who will lead us through the GAT information. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to, to tonight. I hope that um, it's informative for you, and I hope you go away from the evening with uh, a few more questions. Uh, um, Few more answers to some questions that you might have. As Tim said, just a reminder, there is a Q&A panel running this evening. Um, it might be best to wait till the end. Perhaps your question will be answered along the way. Um, but please feel free to put a question up there and we will continue uh, once the evening has finished, we will continue the recording and I'll answer any questions um, and they'll be available on the recording anyway that we've posted on the parent portal. So I'm just going to start with some basic logistics and that's the who, what, when, why and where. So Tim, next slide, thank you. <laughs> so the, uh, there are a large number of students that are required to sit the GAT at St Bernard's this year in 2022. So we will be using the St Bernard's College gym and we'll be using O'Brien Hall and that entire complex on the day of the, the GAT. It's been moved out of its traditional home of June, and that's to accommodate the new format this year. So the GAT this year is going to be Wednesday the 7th of September, and VCAR promises that, that next year going forward, the GAT will return back to its somewhat traditional home um, where it usually lives in June, but it is next Wednesday. I'm going to talk to you a little bit um, before we move sort of through the logistics and the planning about this new GAT format. And I'm really cognizant of the fact that online this evening, there's probably multiple categories of parents and students listening. There might be some U12 parents that um, whose son sat the GAT last year. So it was very much a different format and they had a very different experience. I also acknowledge that there are probably some Year 12 parents of boys um, tonight who at the start of this year did not expect to have to sit the GAT. And as VCA coordinator, nor did I expect them to have to sit the GAT. Um, and then there is also, I welcome our Year 11 parents whose sons are accelerating in one or more Unit 3, 4 subjects. So for you, the GAT is a new experience anyway. Um, so I wanted to just give you a little bit of background. In late 2016-2017, VCAR, which is the um, authorising body of the VCE, they undertook a fairly extensive revision of the VCE. Uh, a large part of that was the senior certificate and, and that was VCAL as well. And we see in 2023 the new VCAL um, design come on board with a name change to the VCE vocational major. Um, and slightly tweaking the requirements of that. In the lead into the new senior certificate, VCAR wanted some solid data around literacy and numeracy. And so they have designed the new GAT format. And what was once traditionally a three hour assessment that only scored students did, 
The new format this year sees the gap broken into two sections, a morning session and an afternoon session. And very much depending upon the level of enrolment and the course that you're enrolled in will depend on which session you have to do. Um, so hopefully by the end of this evening, you'll have a really clear idea of um, what your son is required to do and why. Thanks, Tim. So the two um, sections of the GAT now, section one is a test of literacy and numeracy. And it's very much, I've, I told the boys last week to think of it very much like as a, a senior level of NAPLAND. Victoria is one of the few jurisdictions in Australia that does not collect and has not ever collected um, liter specific literacy and numeracy data for its senior students as they leave secondary school and progress either into the workforce or into tertiary studies or into a traineeship or into an apprenticeship. That literacy and numeracy data is really, really vital in ensuring that the students are at the not so much academic level, but the literary level to be able to cope with the rigours of uh, potential tertiary or vet placed study. So that is why the new test of literacy and numeracy came on board. Section B is a much um, smaller version of the traditional GATT. So for the boys that did the GATT last year, Section B is going to be quite familiar to you. Thanks, Tim. So how is the GATT used? I guess if you were going to ask me prior to this year, the GATT had a very, very specific purpose for the scored students. But it, it takes on a slightly different purpose now. So when we look at Section A, Section A is very much used to demonstrate for the students to be able to demonstrate that they have the literacy and numeracy skills that would be typical for someone that's completing their secondary school. Particularly also in the trades, they were really, really um, pressuring VCAR along the lines that they were getting many students that perhaps had the practical skills required, but were struggling with the VET and the TAFE and the academic requirements of their trade. And I think as most of you would be aware, trades are becoming more and more complicated and, and more and more sophisticated, particularly with computer and technology that's coming into the trades as well. And so they really want to make sure that regardless of the pathway that students go into when they leave senior secondary, that they have the necessary literacy and numeracy skills that will allow them to be successful. So that's what Section A is. Section B is staying very, very traditional. If you are a scored student, Section B, it's not used to count directly towards your VCE, so the GAT is not used to help calculate your study scores or if you are a U12 student to help calculate your ATAR. But in fact, what it does is it allows VCAR to use it as a statistical moderation and it's a bit of an external check against all school-based assessment. So as you would appreciate, English at St Bernard's may read a different book and might have a different sack to English at St Columbus or English at Ave or any other school. And so because of that, and because they're marked internally, it is used very much as a statistical moderation um, if required. The GAD also plays one other really important role, and that is in the event at the end of the year, if a student, a scored student, either misses an exam in its entirety, or the student is really ill, but turns up and does their exam, but significantly underperforms, students can make what is called a derived exam score application, and the GAT is used to help calculate that DES. So as I said to the scored year 12 students and year 11 students in particular, very much think of the GAT as like an insurance policy, you have no way of knowing what will happen at the end of the year, but you do as well as you can in the GAT in the event that if something happens, you've got the GAT to use. Thanks, Tim. So who does which section? Section A, every year 12 student, regardless of their enrolment status, so whether they are VCA scored, VCA non-scored, members of our baccalaureate, or members of our applied learning program, they all have to do section A along with any of our year 11 accelerated students. 
So they all do section A. That's from 9.30 in the morning until 11.45 pens down. At 11.45 pens down, there will be an hour and a half break and the next section will start at 1.15. And 1.15 is only for those students that are doing one or more scored VCE or scored VCE bet subjects. So if you are listening this evening and your son is in the baccalaureate program or is doing non-scored VCE or is in the applied learning pathway, they only have to do section A. Thanks, Tim. So the question I get from students is, can I study for the GAT? No, you can't. Um, it would be the same question, can I study for the NAPLAN? No, the GAT is written with a presumed knowledge of where students should be at the senior level. The same as how the NAPLANs are written for grade three, five, seven and nine. The GAT is written for presumed everyday language and knowledge level of uh, senior students. I've sent the following slide to the students and the following slide has got some active links on it. Thanks, Tim. Um, so the students have got this slide. Um, there are some sample GAT questions. So particularly in light of the new format of the section A and the section B, VCAR have released some sample questions for section A and the bottom link there that you can see the active link is past GAT papers and students who have to do section A and B might like to look at them and so as I said you can't study for it but it wouldn't hurt to sort of open up one of the past papers and, and sort of have a look at the structure of the questions and, and sort of what they look for. Thanks Tim. So what is the structure of the GAT this year? So section A in particular is going to present um, the students with a particular stimulus um, so it could be a photo, it could be an image, it could be a very small passage of reading, like a couple of sentences, it could be some quotes in thought bubbles. Um, and the students are going to be asked to do um, two parts of, of writing. Part one is going to be um, short responses to that stimulus material. Um, and there will also be an extended writing response to that, ex to that material. Then there's going to be 100 multiple choice questions and VCAR is sort of saying to allow yourself 30 minutes for the writing tasks and one and a half hours for the multiple choice. You don't have to, you can take longer or shorter for that, but that's sort of the recommended time. So we can have a look at a sample of the multiple choice questions. And this is one of the samples that VCAR has provided for us. So this is a literacy sample. So we're reading and understanding style questions. So you can see there will be, I guess, a typical concert tour ticket and the students would be required to have a little look at the, the ticket um, and then there's a multiple choice question from from that and that that's a typical sample of a literacy based multiple choice question. The numeracy one you can see here it's just a little bit of basic maths. John is a casual adult worker in a shop He's got an hourly rate, 20% more than the normal hourly rate of an adult worker. The normal hourly rate is $22 per hour. Watch John's hourly rate. So the students would have to apply a little bit of basic numeracy. The beauty is they're going to be allowed to have a basic calculator. So for those that aren't particularly strong in maths um, or numeracy, the calculator will certainly help them. Section B, so this is for the scored students. In the, in the afternoon, they're going to again be presented with a, uh, a prompt and they're going to have to do a writing task. And again, VCAR sort of suggests that you spend 30 minutes doing that. And then they have 50 multiple choice questions. And those 50 multiple choice questions are randomly broken over maths based questions, science based questions, technology, humanities, the arts. Um, now I often get from students, but Miss Kirkwood, I haven't done maths or science for two or three years. It's really unfair that I get those questions. It's an even spread of questions and the way they're written, it, it's, it's a presumed general knowledge. So it's not going to be a subject specific physics or chemistry based science question. It's going to be a sort of a general science question or a general maths question. And again, the students are going to have calculators. So if they find that they're easier to help them with their maths question, they're certainly allowed to use them. 
This is really more for the students and I left this in. Um, the multiple choice questions, there will be a multiple choice sheet that is built into their question and answer booklet. And the students just need to make sure that they clearly colour in those uh, little dials that relate to each question. No human will mark the multiple choice sheet. Uh, they probably won't even touch them. So they are loaded into a large hopper and they're sent in and they're scanned. So students are asked to make sure that they've got pencils in their little writing kit um, and a really good quality eraser so that if they feel they've made an error and they can clearly remove all of the um, all of the colour in and then they put their correct answer in. And as you can see there, do not cross out the response. Students can't, you can't have multiple answers on the one line. So if you colour in A and then you, you know, you change your mind and you think it's C, you can't just put a cross through A. You have to actually rub out A and you need to fill in C properly. OK, going to very quickly move through some policies and some procedures just so that everybody's clear on, you know, how the day works. Students, when they are in the beginning of year 10, are assigned a V car number and it's an eight digit number with a single letter sequence at the end. And the boys all know this, but if they go onto their My SBC and they click on their photograph in the top right hand corner, that dashboard will actually take them to just some very basic information about them. And in that basic information, it will have their VCAR number um, and they then need to just have a look at the seating plan that I published on My SBC and I sent the link to the boys and they need to know their seating plan. So it makes life easier if they arrive on the day knowing their row and their seat number. And the boys that are doing both sessions, so session A and session B, will be on the gym floor and will be in the same row and the same seat for both sessions. And the boys that are only doing the morning session will be at O'Brien Hall. And I know Jacqueline Munro, who is very involved in the baccalaureate program and the VCAL coordinator, she has worked with those boys to ensure that they know their row number and their seat number. But I'm happy for the boys to find me at school tomorrow if they don't know how to find their VCAR number and then they can't find themselves on the seating plan, I'm happy to help them out. You do need to bring your own writing materials and they must be in a clear plastic bag. This is a VCAR requirement for the GAT and actually for the end of year exams. VCAR recommend that any writing that you have to do, so for the section, uh, uh, for the writing responses in section A and section B, do it in blue or black pen. Don't write in pencil. Um, but the multiple choice sheet needs to be done in pencil. Have a really good eraser. At no time at all, on any VCAR external assessment, are you allowed to use liquid paper or any sort of corrective tape? So please do not put it in your kit. Um, you don't really need a ruler. You can have one if you want one. A sharpener is always a good idea. And again, you don't really need a highlighter, um, but you can have one if you want to. Dictionary. You are allowed to have a dictionary and you are allowed to access your dictionary during reading time. So both section A and section B, We'll start with 15 minutes of reading time before students are allowed to pick up their pens. So students are actually encouraged during reading time to access their dictionaries if they need to. Need to point out that it cannot be a dictionary thesaurus combo and it can't be obviously, you're not allowed to take any electronics into the room at all. So it can't be any sort of electronic dictionary. And we need to make sure that dictionaries that are being brought in are clean. So there's no highlighting or annotating or quotes or anything like that written in it. You know, your, front, your first name and your home room and all that in the inside front cover is fine, but they just can't be writing throughout the dictionary. And they will be checked by both myself, some Bernard staff, and then when the boys get into the exam room by the VCAR supervisors, so it's just a good idea not to bring a dictionary if it doesn't. Um, if it's got writing all through it, I would recommend you leave it and or grab a different one. Calculators. It's really important, I think, for this particular new GAT format that the boys get themselves a cal calculator, but they have to have a particular type. Now, most of the boys have probably got a CAS calculator. It's the one they use for further maths and for um, maths methods and for specialists cannot use that one for the GAT, have to just have a really basic scientific calculator. So basically your good old plus minus um, times and divide, and that's basically about it. So cannot bring a CAS in because it is programmable, obviously. So we just want a really basic calculator. And I um, 
put the pink Hello Kitty one there because I thought it was just really cute. All right, the boys are going to get thirsty, but VCAR has pretty strict rules about it. Um, maximum 1.5 litres. This is the one time I would tell the boys not to worry about being, you know, environmentally friendly and sustainable and just simply buy a throwaway water bottle because you can't have a tinted or, you know, plastic bottle. If you're going to have a, you know, a sustainable bottle, it has to be clear and see through. You can't have any labels or writing or anything on it. So you have to just basically have a water bottle and if you buy a bottle of pump or something, you just pull the label off and the label has to go in the bin. It's a clear bottle, it can only be water and it can never live on your desk in the exam room. It must always be placed on the floor. Clothing on the day, so what do you wear? It's a bit hard to know what the weather's going to be next Wednesday. I had a bit of an advanced look and it said 20 degrees, but we're really not sure what the weather's gonna be. But year 12 students, are asked to wear their rugby tops um, with some sort of casual clothes. You can wear jeans or your, your St Bernard's tracksuit pants or just any other tracksuit pants is fine. Um, Year 11 students um, are going to be wearing their St Bernard sports uniform. You cannot have anything on your head at all. So you can't have any hoods or caps or beanies or anything like that. Um, and your ears must be clear because they need to ensure that you have not got a listening device in your ear, which I know sounds bizarre, but they are the rules. So um, St Bernard's rugby top for the year 12s and the sports uniform for the year 11 students. Prohibited materials. Obviously VCAR is very, very strict about this and there is an hour and a half break in between session A and session B. So there's certainly no food, no phones, and I'll speak on that a little bit more in a moment. But you cannot have any digital sports or Fitbit watches or any sort of smart watches. If you have to have a watch in the exam room, you really can only have an analog watch and you're going to have to take it off and put it on the desk in front of you anywhere anyway. Um, no bags at the venues at all. The boys are asked to arrive at school by 8.45, which is a normal start time for them anyway. So they can leave their bags and their phones and everything in their lockers um, and simply just come down to the forecourt in front of the gym with basically just what they need for their exam. Let me talk to you about mobile phones. I said to the boys last week, and some of them are a little shocked, VCAR are incredibly strict. This is a this is a tightly controlled environment. You cannot take an, a phone into the exam room with you. Once the boys enter any VCAR external assessment, they are, yes, they might be physically based at St Bernard's, but they are 100% under all of the rules and regulations of VCAR. They are also not under a direct supervision of St Bernard staff, they are under supervision of VCAR appointed staff. So if your son is found to have any electronic device or a mobile phone in his possession, it will be taken off him. And if his phone sits in a case that has his license and his credit card and everything else that will be taken in its entirety, it will be sent into VCAR legal department and they will decide when it will be returned. They say three to six months. If VCAR decide to pursue legal action or if they need to do a forensic dive of the phone, it could be six to nine months. So I really need you to be aware of that. If a phone is discovered, the chief supervisor is informed immediately. He gives me the phone. I put it in a, in a courier's package um, and, and it's gone. And I know the boys in the past that it's happened to have been very, very upset. And I've had calls from parents, you know, some ranging from please help to how dare you, but I, I really need you to be aware that the phone will be taken and we can't help you. Um, so please don't take a phone into the exam room or any unauthorized electronic devices into the exam room with you at all for both the GAT and the end of year exams. The boys actually hear a legal notice from me before they move down they hear the same legal notice from the chief supervisor and they walk past about 30 posters before they get into the exam room. So there are plenty of opportunities for them to surrender an electronic device before they enter the room. Okay, just some basic logistics for the day. Um, obviously there are two sessions, but I the bulk of the, the cohort, the largest number, so 360 students, 
will all be sitting section A. So that's a lot of people to corral. Um, so as I said, 8.45, normal arrival time. There's no homeroom, just bags and phones into lockers and then make your way directly down to the forecourt with your drink bottle, your dictionary and your writing kit. Um, and I will have you lined up at 10 past nine. I will do the legal announcements. I will say what I need to say. And then at quarter past nine, I will start sending boys down row by row by row down into the gym. Um, or if they're in O'Brien Hall, they'll be sent row by row by row into O'Brien Hall. If, or if they're in one of the surrounding rooms, they will make their way down when row seven, eight, and nine go down. So we really need boys on the forecourt no later than 8.45. Um, for those that are finishing the day at 11.45, you're free to leave and go home for the day. Um, for those that are required to sit section B, you're also free to walk up to the shop and get some fish and chips or whatever you want to do, but you need to be back on the forecourt by 12.50. Because once again, I will line you up and at one o'clock, I'll start sending you down to the gym and 1.15, you start the second session. So it's really important that you are in the right place at the right time. Okay, we're going to line up on the forecourt in front of the gym. It's a lovely area to line up and it fits, you know, 20 rows of students, 20 rows by 16 nicely. A couple of years ago, we had some light misty rain and we just, we stuck it out. Um, and I did the legal announcements and I got the move, boys moving pretty quickly. Um, 2020, after we battled, I think, eight changes of the gap date moves with COVID, um, it was Noah's Ark torrential rain uh, the day of the gap. Of course it was. Um, so we lined up in the auditorium. We stayed in our rows, um, but we lined up in the auditorium. They still need to hear the legal announcement and then we move off in rows. So they'll be moving from the auditorium down to the gym. Um, but, you know, ideally we want to be lining up on the forecourt. Just remember at all times, you won't see me or you may not see me in the rooms. There will be, for the most part, people that you do not know that will be directing you. You are to follow the directions and any all time chief supervisor or for the boys that are baccalaureate, applied learning and non-scored, who will be in O'Brien Hall, you will have two very experienced supervisors in there that will be running your particular section A of the GAT and you need to follow their directions at all times. As soon as reading time starts, head down, 15 minutes of reading, and then you pick up your pens and you write, and then 11.45, you put your pens down, papers will be collected, you're dismissed, and then you exit the building and then you disappear, but you are under their direction at all times. Okay, so the question I often get from students is, I'm sick or, you know, it's still a reality, I'm COVID positive, although I noticed tonight's announcement on the news that the COVID isolation period has just been dropped from seven days to five days. But nonetheless, let's say you are seriously ill um, and you don't attend or you are COVID positive and you don't attend. Once Section A is off and running and I have finished doing all of the um, VCAR administration that I have to do, I will get a role from the Chief Supervisor and that role will have the names of all the students that are absent. And I, in an email, I will send you out an application for exemption from the GAT. You will have about three days to return that form and the supporting documentation back to me should you choose to do that. Um, if you choose not to, so if you're absent from the GAT and you choose not to do the paperwork, if you are a year 12 student on the bottom of your transcript, whether it's a VCE or a VCAL, you will simply have the statement unauthorised absence from the GAT. Now, some employers and some TAFEs don't really pay much attention to that and some do. I think it's also really important to note the following. If you choose not to turn up to the GAT by choice and there is nothing wrong with you, there is no point making an application for exemption because VCAR are not going to approve it. There really has to be a legitimate reason not to turn up to the GAT. But like all VCAR exams, there's no other opportunities to sit it. So end of year exams, it's a one attempt only. You're either there at the time 
on the date in the location or you're not. Um, I have asked the front office to take messages if parents phone in, but I'm going to be really honest with you. I will be probably not contactable between about 8.30 and 9.30, and they will just put the calls through to my voicemail and I will start to eventually return phone calls after about 9.30, but I really need to get the gap in before I start looking at any of my emails. So I really would encourage you to turn up, even if you're feeling slightly off colour. Obviously, if you are contagious, um, you can't turn up, but you do really need to try and sit the gap if you can. Okay, while I've got parents here, I understand particularly with Year 12 students that um, there's a particularly challenging time coming up in the next two weeks with final assessment. Um, this is very much the reality of Year 12. Um, most courses will coincide with everybody assessing in the final two weeks so that students have finished all school-based assessment then they can turn their attention to the trial exams and then they can turn their attention to um, really prepping for and uh, going through the teacher's directions um, with the best advice to really be prepared for the, the end of your exams, which are rapidly approaching. So I certainly understand, and the two other year 12 level leaders, Tim Cunningham and Jed McIntyre, and the two year 11 level leaders, Jen Howard and Colin McFarlane, we are all very, very aware of the number of sacks some students have. Um, and I know it sounds a little um, non-supportive to say we're aware of it, um, but that is the reality of year 12. Certainly reach out, but I think sometimes in this instance, reaching out and pushing a sack back really just delays the inevitable um, so there, we'll certainly work with students who are, you know, who are really not coping. Um, but there is something to be said for moving through the final assessments and just moving through that step and preparing for the next step. While I've also got you a reminder of trial exams during the holidays, for the most part, they're running Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the first week and Monday and Tuesday of the second week. And that exam timetable was put out at the beginning of this term. So it has well and truly been out for a good 10 weeks. Um, so the students certainly have access to that. I am just uh, looking at the Q&A panel here and I have absolutely zero questions. So I guess I've covered all of the information um, as well as I can. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in this evening. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit about the GAT and the purpose that it serves and, and why it runs and why the boys need to, need to sort of sit it and, and the purpose of sitting it and of doing your best. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for attending and I bid you all a good night. Thank you.